Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome to another episode of my TIG Welding How-To Series, TIG Welding for Beginners. Okay, so to do my polishing, the tool that I most likely will work with is this pneumatic sander or a pneumatic sander of any kind like this. For the sake of the demo today, I'm just gonna use a couple pads here to sand the stuff. I'm gonna use 100 grit to start with, and I'm gonna probably finish it off with 400. So basically what you're trying to do, the scratches are gonna show and show really, really blatantly. So the rougher stuff first, and if you flatten it with a 3M grinder or something like this first, like a scotch pad, what you can do is remove a lot of these scratches first so that when we start the sanding process, we're gonna slowly start eliminating this top surface, bringing it down so that when we get to the polishing stage, there's no blemishes or anything left from the grinder or sander or the scratches that you see here. So we're gonna start out with the grinder. I got a 3M Scotch-Brite pad on here with a backing wheel. These guys are great, especially if you have a couple that are tucked aside that aren't totally brand new. When they're super brand new, they're pretty sharp and they can actually leave pretty good gouges in your material. So if you start with one that's kind of like half used like this guy here, it might give you a little bit more wiggle room as far as not putting scratches or grinding wheel marks in your material. Okay, here we go. What I'm doing is I'm really trying to hold my grinder super flat. If you're holding it up on an edge like this, where your wheel is angled onto your material, you're gonna put dish and scratch marks into your material. So you wanna make sure you hold it relatively flat. If you need to set it down before it starts running to feel when it's flat, do that and then lift it up slightly and start. You want a quick way to have a little cheat look and see how it's gonna look. Hit it with a piece of hand Scotch-Brite pad. This stuff will kind of give it a uniform look. And you can have a look at it and you can kind of see, we've gotten rid of most of the scratches. You can see some vague swirl marks, but the swirl marks were done when it was flat. So I think we might be okay. So one thing I will do when we get to this point to avoid any scratches like this stuff here, which I've just done by accident, is I'm gonna put some tape on my clamp feet. When you put tape on the feet of your clamp, you'll be able to clamp this guy down nice and tight and you're not gonna scratch it. All right, so now we have our compressor running. I got my pneumatic sander plugged in, ready to go. So we're gonna start off the 100 grit. So the rougher of the two that I've picked here. Again, if I was really going to town on this for a real project, I'd probably start with something like 100, work my way up to 220, 320, 400, and just keep going probably all the way. I've done 1200, 1500 before, so depends how crazy you wanna get with it. But for today, just for the sake of showing you guys, this is what we'll do. So again, like we did with the Scotch Brite grinder, we just wanna make sure that we don't hold this guy up on edge like this. We wanna leave it as flat as possible, because that way you're not gonna get any digging or dish marks, half moon kind of shape, grind marks in it. We'll avoid all that by holding it flat. You can let the orbital sander kind of do what it wants as far as which way it wants to go. What you wanna make sure is that you're not letting it run into stuff. If you're letting it run into the clamp arm or things like that, you're gonna get marks of it stopping and stalling on your piece. So for now, this is pretty good. The reason I'm happy with it here is because we've kind of got a uniform sanding grain through the whole thing. So I'm all right with that. We'll move on to the next pad. Switching to the 400. Again, nice and flat. And again, with the Scotch-Brite hand pad here, 
This one's pretty worn out, so this one's about perfect. If you use a new one of these, again, similar to the grinding wheels, they're pretty sharp and coarse. So this guy's worn out pretty good. This will be kind of perfect for this. I'll just kind of rough it all up just to uniform the surface. This will get rid of all the little swirl marks from the sandpaper swirling around on the orbital. Once I've got kind of a uniform look to it like this, I'll put a grain in it. So what I mean by this is doing the same thing, but running it in all one direction so that it actually looks like it's the natural grain of the metal. So once you're happy with the grain and the look that you've got going on it, be careful not to scratch it. Even your fingernails will leave little scratches on this stuff. If you want to do it perfectly, treat it like a clean room in NASA. <laughs> All right, I'm pretty happy with this guy. So I'm gonna take it home. I'm gonna hit it with my polishing stuff. So let's go move to the polishing stage. Okay, so we are back at my spot, my little shop here at my house. Um, this is how I polish most of my stuff. Uh, so I got my piece of material here that we uh, did up in the shop, made it real, as you can see, looks pretty good, pretty uniform. We got that grain that we talked about using the Scotch-Brite pad uh, to get the uniform grain to it. So it looks pretty good. Again, if I was doing this for show or something like that, I would probably spend a little bit more time with the sanding process, but this, just for the sake of showing you guys how I do it, I think this is pretty good. So what do I use to make this stuff shine like chrome? This stuff here, People might disagree and they might have some better stuff, but I've tried quite a few things and this stuff, the Mother's Mag Aluminum Polish is by far from what I've seen, the best stuff out there. Again, if you're listening and you found some better stuff, leave it in the comments below. I'm all for learning, but as far as what I've found so far, this stuff is awesome. So there's a link in my description to buy this stuff off Amazon. Uh, it's like 10 bucks or something like that. It's pretty cheap. If you use that link, it's my affiliate account. So I get a bit of a kickback off that. And I'm talking like maybe 10 cents, but <laughs> if you use it, I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, so what do I use to buff all of uh, <clears throat> what I'm doing? I'll be pretty careful about what I'm using as far as I don't wanna scratch the material because it's really easy to scratch as of right now. So what I will use is uh, you can buy these things off Amazon as well. I'll put a link to these in my description, but they're basically just like buffing wheels and you can set them up in a drill, which is kind of nice. So in the drill, uh, you can set your drill up high speed, low speed, whatever you'd like to start with. I will usually take a blob of this on a really smooth rag and wipe it down just to rub it in. And then once I do that, I will switch to one of the buffing wheels. As you can see, I try and keep one fairly clean. And then this guy's like the finishing one. So all the stuff is mostly gone off the material, but you'll see what I mean. I'll start with something like this and then I'll get most of it off and then I'll switch to something like this and then finish it with that. Uh, you've also seen in my other videos, I do use a Dremel tool. Uh, my Dremel tool, you can get little bits like this off Amazon. Again, I'll put a link in my description to these guys as well. You can get a bag of like 200 of these things uh, for like 10 bucks. So it's a pretty good deal. <laughs> but yeah, the Dremel's good. You just wind one of these guys onto the end of the bit here, and then it does most of the work for you, which is nice. So you can go either way, uh, or you can go by hand. It's all good. If you are gonna go by hand, you wanna make sure that you're using a proper rag, something like this guy here this is like a piece of an old towel it's actually pretty coarse um, if you do use something like this that's a little bit coarse believe it or not it will scratch your material so uh, what I found to be the best stuff at least is at least the best stuff I have kicking around at the house is like an old piece of a pillowcase or something like that this stuff is way smoother you're gonna get a much more uniform grain you won't affect any of the grain when you start to polish it with something smooth like this so I recommend something like this Okay, here we go. So we're gonna start with, uh, just gonna polish about half of it here so you guys can actually see the difference between an uh, unpolished side and a polished side. But you'll start to see as you wipe it in and it gets into the, into the material, it actually starts to turn black. So it, uh, it may seem like you're doing something wrong, but that's supposed to happen. You'll see it'll actually start to polish itself out and you'll start to see some of that shine coming through. At this point here, I usually just flip the rag over and use a clean spot and just get most of this stuff off. I usually do it a couple times just to, uh, look at that, you can see the reflection of this stuff in there. I usually do it a couple times. If I really want to get crazy, I'll do this probably three or four times and um, 
Yeah, the more times you do it, the more oxide you bring off the surface and this stuff will shine like a mirror. It's pretty crazy. You can see there, we're starting to get into the real shiny stuff. So take a look from where we started from to where we're at now. If you do this two or three more times, this is gonna be insanely shiny. So as you get a little further along with the polishing, you probably want to start as you get closer to the end buffing. You wanna buff with the green usually. Um, at this point, you actually, st when you get really, really shiny like this, if you're doing circles uh, and a motion kind of across the green in any way, it will show up quite a bit. So when you get real close to being finished, you wanna go with the green. For the other half of it here, I'm gonna use the drill bit. So uh, maybe we'll go a little quicker with this one. And again, when you're using the drill bit, same uh, kind of idea with the rag. You wanna be moving with the grain. If you're working in circles or sideways or even on an angle and stuff like that, you're gonna mess up the grain. And especially if you've already done a spot that's real clean, you wanna match it so you wanna stay with the grain with everything. So I usually like to start it by hand. Once you start to rub it in a little bit more, then I'll switch to using the drill bit. There's kind of the difference between like one go at it here, the first one we just tried, and then two or three goes at it by hand over here. So you can see how your time is kind of worth it uh, to do a few passes with this stuff. Okay, and to finish it off here, I'm just gonna switch to this totally clean one. Pretty uniform, There's definitely a couple little spots I might work out, but overall, that's pretty shiny. Another thing I didn't mention earlier is these guys actually can be washed by hand. So once you use them two or three times, I'll just usually throw them in the sink and give them a good scrub with dishwasher soap. Gets rid of a lot of this stuff. So you can reuse them, which is kind of nice. All right, thanks a lot for watching this tutorial on how I polish aluminum. Again, like I said earlier, this is just the way I do it. I'm not saying it's the best way out there to do it. If you know of a way that works really good too, hit me up. You can either leave a comment below and I'll read it, or you can hit me up on Instagram. It's at Pacific Art TIG Welding. I love learning, so I appreciate it. If you know of a better way, let me know. I'm all ears. Uh, thank you guys very much for watching. If you haven't checked out the rest of the videos on my channel, and I really appreciate it. If you like, subscribe, share, do all that stuff. I feel really bad asking, but it helps grow the channel. The more people that watch these videos, the more videos I'll make. I really appreciate you watching. Thanks a lot. Have a good one. Peace.